Welcome back to Project 613. Today we continue learning about the Shmona Shiratsim. These are the eight type of creeping animals that the Torah talks about that if someone touches their dead body, that could convey ritual impurity. So whereas with larger animals, any large animal, once it dies, it conveys ritual impurity. But when it comes to the creeping animals, the Torah names eight specific ones which we learned about yesterday. Now, even though we learned the names of them yesterday, the truth is there there is much disagreement as to which specific animals, rodents, are included in this list of eight and which ones are meant by the names that the Torah gives. And the reason for this argument is because this is a law that has become highly non-practical ever since the destruction of the Second Temple. And when laws that are not practiced on a daily basis, it's only natural that after some years there should be some argument as to what the law specifically means simply because it hasn't been practiced in so long. This is because, as we learned, this type of ritual impurity would only be important for kohanim, let's say priests, who had to eat from sacrificial meat. And if they would be ritually impure, they would not be allowed to eat from that meat until they would go to the mikvah and wait until the end of the day. So as so while the temple stood, it's obvious that it was well known which specific animals these eight are referring to. But ever since the destruction, because this law has not been practiced, this is why there is some element of disagreement as to which specific eight are included on this list. Now, we don't know why the Torah chose these specific eight as opposed to others, but this law goes into the general category of chukim. These are the irrational laws as when it comes to the general law of ritual purity and impurity that we accept it because it's God's decree even though we don't have a reason for it, but we can assume that if God decreed this for us, there is some sort of benefit for us as well, even if we don't necessarily understand it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.